Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about some tips I have for growing your Instagram, some do's and don'ts, and I will also be working on a digital painting while I'm telling you about how I grew my social media and things that I noticed uh, do help or harm your growth on Instagram. Before we begin, I wanted to say thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys know they are my favorite sponsor on my channel, so I'm really grateful to be working with them again. If you don't know what Skillshare is, which is super unlikely, <laughs> they are an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There's thousands of really inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, graphic design, writing, animation, marketing, productivity, and more. Skillshare classes are a combination of video lessons with a class project that vary in length depending on the class you take, so there will always be a class that will fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes, and most of these classes are under 60 minutes, so the material is broken down into short, digestible chunks of information. Since I'm going Going to be talking about growing your Instagram and marketing technically. I wanted to share some very useful videos on this subject. I'm just going to be talking about my personal experience but Skillshare has tons of classes on things like marketing and branding and increasing your reach and your audience uh, based on SEOs and knowing the algorithm. I recommend personal branding, crafting your social media presence by Kate Ahrens. If you're interested in learning how to create your own personal brand and how to set yourself apart on social media, premium membership starts at only $10 a month. That's a crazy deal compared to other online learning platforms or even college classes that will teach you the exact same information. So if you're interested, please check out the link down in the description for a free two-month trial to the first thousand people to use the link. Uh, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video again, and let's get started into the topic. I'm going to be using Photoshop with my Huion WH1409 version 2 tablet to be creating this painting. It is a small bust portrait of Aurora from Sleeping Beauty because she's my favorite Disney princess and I wanted to draw her digitally in my style. I thought it would be really cute. But to begin, my very first tip is don't post low light photos. It's not attractive for your feed and it doesn't do that one artwork justice whenever you post low light photos. I understand that not everybody's cameras can be insanely wonderful. You might not have an iPhone or a DSLR or just a good point and shoot camera to take pictures of your artwork, but if anything, try to take well lit photos of your artwork that don't have unintentional shadows on them and then make an effort to get a free photo editing app to make sure that your white balance is good and that your brightness saturation levels all of that basic editing looks good you can even use the instagram in app editing but don't just take a low light photo of your work and then post it without editing that is honestly super unprofessional and people are not going to be attracted to look at your artwork if you don't have good presentation. Something that I've learned in school in graphic design is presentation is key. Presentation is everything and there is a lot of emphasis placed on presentation in graphic design. So same applies to social media. Please take the opportunity to take good photos of your artwork, scan it if possible, use somebody else's phone, use an actual camera, take it to your computer, edit it however you want to. Just make sure that you're uploading the best quality that you can possibly upload. My second tip is focus on art. I understand that if you have, let's say, 200 followers, a good amount of those might be your friends or people that you know in real life, so you can be tempted to post personal and random photos alongside your artwork. That just makes your page a personal page where you also post artwork so in the nicest way possible somebody who has absolutely no idea who you are is probably not gonna care to see a food pic or a dog pic they won't care if they don't have any attachment to you usually bigger creators have had an audience for a longer time where people get connected to their personality and their character or just kind of curious since there's this whole like aura that a 
more famous person has they're interested to see what their actual day-to-day life is like and this is just to be blunt and honest like people won't really care about that kind of stuff if you're you don't have a lot of followers there is a right way and a wrong way to do that i don't want to discourage you from posting personal photos on your account if they're somehow relevant to your art if they show your followers something new about you or they get to know you in that sense there it's a it's a deliberate change though from posting oh here's dinner with my friends to oh this is a corner of my studio you know that is still personal but it's more engaging to your audience so even posting photos of yourself there's a way where you can do it to engage with your audience versus to post it as if you had a personal page so if possible if you want to post both just make a personal account put it up in your bio and be like personal account at blank you want to make sure that your intentions for your account aren't confused when somebody just stumbles across it or finds you that being said i also want to say that some artists some people have something that sets them apart in their artwork I don't know exactly what sets me apart i do focus on like fairy tale work so i think that's something that might set me apart i don't know you'll have to let me know down in the description but if you do have something in your personal life that does set you apart you know maybe it's a physical condition or maybe you majored or study something that is not related to art but that you can somehow talk about and make it part of your brand and your personality that is good to include it sets you apart and makes you unique but it is again purposeful you're sharing that information to share with an audience rather than with friends and family so that's just my opinion on that third super important is to have an easy to remember username or to have it be short i see a lot of artists with very long usernames or hard to pronounce usernames or even usernames that are kind of meme and to be honest that's not professional. <laughs> I understand my username is quite hard to say or pronounce but it's my name. It's my first name as the my nickname from childhood and then my last name and this is because when I started my Instagram I did start it as a sort of a personal page but just sharing my art with people that I knew and then it grew to what it is now and I haven't ever changed it since. It kind of stuck. I do like it and it is my branding it's on everything i put out so i think it would be a really big hassle to change it so that's my experience right i have a username that i've stuck through for all of my time on social media on multiple platforms so my advice to you is to choose a username that you will stick by for years (laughs) something that you're very comfortable your brand if it's get if it gets really really big you're comfortable with that being your brand's identity and your name so if you I have something that's kind of a meme like if you have a pepe kind of username or it's insanely long i would suggest changing it shortening it up it doesn't have to be insanely easy to pronounce i know mine is not but mine is relatively short my next tip if this is so important to be honest i'm telling you what i feel and think whenever i look at new art accounts or upcoming ones like smaller ones that i see are growing i don't appreciate seeing self-deprecating language in your bio or in your posts in your captions that's something that i struggled with when i was starting out and even now i still struggle with posting content and paintings and drawings that i'm not 100 percent happy with but knowing how to have honest critique of that rather than self-deprecating and saying how horrible your artwork is. If you yourself in your bio write something self-deprecating, it doesn't inspire confidence in me to follow you. It just garners a an audience, a very small niche audience that is, for lack of a better word, unhealthily depressed, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It sounds bad, but it's true. I've been there. I, I've been there. <laughs> I know exactly what that feels like, and it's not constructive to you or to followers. So self-esteem and confidence are insanely important, especially when you are a small business, a creator, you're an independent, you're a startup. It is hard to be in this position and to make it through. It's not impossible. It just takes guts, you know? So don't self-deprecate. Believe in yourself. Like, have courage. That sounds so cheesy. 
have confidence that you can do it. And again, I learned in graphic design classes, don't point out what's wrong with your artwork. If anything, let others point out what they think is wrong because so much of the time you might point out a flaw that somebody didn't notice was there and now they're looking at it. Point out your favorite parts of the piece and write internal notes in your head about what you change in the process when you keep working on your artwork, what you would change about your upcoming work. Don't be de self-deprecating on any of your posts, on your bio. Just have confidence. Talk a little bit about who you are. Put links to uh, any other social media that you have to if you have a shop links to that links to any causes that you want people to donate to things that are actually productive so when you start to kind of speak words about yourself that are confident that are kind you are going to raise your self-esteem and it's going to bring a lot more light and encouragement to you as well as to other people seeing that in their feed. So I understand a lot of times, you know, there's insecurity starting up as an artist and having imposter syndrome. I still have imposter syndrome. I'm doubtful of my artwork every single day and it's something that I do have to work on is the way I speak to myself about that and the way I um, share my frustrations online about my artwork. It is important to still have self-esteem when talking about your artwork and yourself. My next two tips are pretty obvious, but I think are important to talk about anyway because they're some of the best ways to grow your audience online, and that is to interact with accounts with similar or slightly more followers than you have. You can comment, like, collaborate with them, send them a message. Something that I learned on this journey is to also not bug people if you've messaged them let's say two to three times and they don't respond i guess don't bug them that's not going to make somebody want to respond to you more and it's probably a good indication that they don't check their messages or that they don't want to reach out to you as well so just find somebody else to ha be friends with to collaborate with and sure enough people with similar demographics and similar audiences than you are definitely going to want to interact with you and i think that you know, the amount of followers you have does not really matter. Some of my favorite artists on Instagram have, let's say, a thousand to two thousand followers. Like some of the best, most skilled, proficient artists that I see, classically trained artists, have that many because they don't really focus on their social media presence. And to them, gallery work and fine art exposure, finding contacts in the real world versus online, that's important to them. So they don't have large social medias. If you do, try to interact with accounts with smaller followings you can definitely make actual friends because you're both on the same journey and trying to get to the same destination and also it is much more likely that they will see your comments and see your dms pop up because their notifications are not flooded my last tip super basic makes sense is to post regularly like two to three times a week i think that's a very manageable goal since you don't have to be concerned with posting every single day and if you don't have content to post i think it's better to wait to create something good than just to post something half finished your feed is going to look a lot better when you actually put in work into each of your pieces but posting consistently is important so if you can create two art pieces a week to post you can post work in progress shots, uh, posts of your studio, posts of art supplies you've been using, just a variety of different content. You could even post, as I do, sketches that you've been working on. People love to see sketches for some reason. The, they're like the my top interaction are sketches. You can definitely vary the content that you post but still post pretty regularly. That's when I had most of my engagement and growth on Instagram was when I was posting two to three times a week. And I really recommend that if you're struggling to stay on top of the algorithm and be seen on other people's feeds, posting regularly does help with that a lot. I hope you learned something from these tips. I'm sorry if they were a little bit like brutally honest, but they're just things I don't see a lot of people talking about. And I think they're super important to talk about because it's just like the reality of the situation. I think a lot of people don't want to talk about some of these because it comes off a little bit as rude, but that's not the intention or the goal. It's just kind of the, the way that the algorithm works and the way that people connect to your artwork and choose to follow your account. So if 
if you implement any of these tips let me know down in the comments i would love to know if this helped you at all and if you want to see a part two i can definitely make a part two with more tips on what you can be doing better on your instagram and ways to grow your audience and your reach but thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring this video again links down in the description for the free two-month trial and if you enjoy this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos because i've been putting them up pretty regularly and click the notification bell so you can know when i post them i don't have a schedule at the moment but if you're interested in seeing more videos just hit that notification bell so you can know when they go up but i will talk to you guys in my next video stay safe thank you so much for watching bye